September 12, 2009, history was made when Anise Parker became the first openly gay person to serve as mayor of a major US city. Council members, would you rise and join me, please? Ready? Raise your right hands, please. And repeat after me. When I say I, you will each state your name. I. 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 You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. I will execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of City Council, of City Council, of the City of Houston, of the City of Houston, of the State of Texas, of the State of Texas, and will to the best of my ability, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws of the United States, of the United States. Several months later, after her first 100 days in office. I was invited to revisit our community hero to find out what running for mayor was actually like. The following is that second interview, which this time we filled in the prestigious press room in Houston City Hall. 2009, before you had kicked off your campaign for mayor, and um, we um, talked then about what it was going to be like going into the campaign. So here we are today in April 2010 and you have just celebrated your first 100 days so congratulations it's great so before your campaign started you described campaigning as a combination of a job interview and a bad blind date that goes on and on and on for months and months so is that how your campaign actually felt they all feel like that there are highs and lows in a campaign but Essentially what you're doing night after night, day after day, is going out and, and, and selling yourself. You're, you, it's a singular product you're, you're selling. And uh, you're constantly introducing yourself, yourself to, to strangers and trying to make an impression. Part of how you manage that process is how you package yourself. And I don't mean that you, you change who you are or, or uh, your core beliefs, but you figure out how best to present yourself to people mm -hmm. and uh, that you have a consistent message and I appreciated you saying that I was open and transparent in my campaigns because I've always mm -hmm. uh, tried to do that but one of the key elements has been that I knew what my positions were on issues I knew how to articulate those positions and the answers didn't change over the course of a campaign mm -hmm. and uh, so you're trying to make that good first impression on the blind date or for the job interview without hiding who you really are. Exactly. And also in January you said, because of my sexual orientation, although I'm a strong contender, I have to work harder. And I have to convince people to vote for me and allow me to work for them. So how hard was it? This was a difficult campaign. It was an expensive campaign. Ended up spending about $4 million on the race. So a lot of what I did over the, the year of campaigning was, was raise money. And uh, that was a, a, just a huge lift to mm -hmm. have to raise that amount of money. Mm -hmm. But because I've been elected before and voters were familiar with me, I did start from, a, from some advantage, which is that uh, voters had a good impression of me. I had very high favorables and high name ID. We tested negative messages against me. We did uh, our own polling where we drove down on negative messages. And if the only message people hear is, well, this is a lesbian candidate for mayor, I was going to lose. Mm. But if they heard uh, Anise Parker has a position on public safety, she has a, a position on air quality, on balancing the budget, on immigration, all of these things. And of course, you already know she's a lesbian. You've already voted for her before knowing that, and we just go on, that that's a different dynamic with the voters. So again, it seems like it became a non-issue again. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a non-issue. It's something that people process and think about, but the other issues were more important. Uh, they had multiple data points, and they needed those other data points to, uh, to 
help many of them. Some people voted, they didn't care what my sexual orientation is, but there were others. I had a lot of conservative supporters who felt that I was the best candidate to deal with the fiscal issues facing the city, and uh, they chose to make that more important than the sexual orientation. Anise Parker ran because she believed she was the most qualified candidate. However, by being open about her sexual orientation, while serving in the highest office in the fourth largest city of the United States, 